Okay, guys, we're back. So I have um, I have finished up my line all the way around the outside like I ended that uh, last video. So the line is done all the way around the outside. So uh, what I need to do now is just take all of this material out. So I'm going to fire up the router and show you how I do that. Now I had already explained that I'm going to do the background to try and simulate uh, a sandblasted look. So the pattern that I'm going to do is not my normal circular type pattern. It's going to be uh, strictly horizontal. Um, but, but what I have to do before that is because these lines are fairly thin around these letters, I'm going to go around these letters with that same bit that I did these lines with here and give myself a, a buffer zone around those letters so that I won't have to get too close with them and it'll still uh, uh, it'll still give us the effect that we want. Uh, much like when I'm carving outset one inch letters, you guys know I do that at multiple depths so that I don't have to get so close with the, with the cleanup bit. And on this one, because it's so huge, it'd be really easy to nick those letters if I don't do an outline around them. So that's what we're going to do right now. Fire up the router here. Get my cheaters on. And I will do that little... You need to adjust the depth here a little bit, I think. That should be about right. All right, you with me, Dad? Yeah, you're going to turn that sign around? Oh, yeah, I guess I should. Huh. I can do that. Okay. We ready? I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, I thought that would make it interesting for the viewers. 
Yeah. Just to know that you you do most of it when you're pulling the wire to get a portion of the wire. This redwood is pretty soft, so it's not too bad. But I am taking out a lot of a lot of material, so. Real careful, you can nick one of those letters pretty well. That's a lot of sawdust. All right, so let's just kind of blow this off real quick. And me. Okay, so now I've gone around all those letters. And you can see, I, do, I wasn't trying to be super careful as far as my line here. Not like when I'm profiling my letters, because that's all going to be taken out anyway. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, the part that I have to be the most careful with is in between the letters, you know, in this area here. So what I want to do is I want to create a bunch of horizontal lines, which in this case, because of the way I'm looking at it, they're vertical, but when the sign is turned around this way, they're horizontal. So I want to, I want lines going this way. So I'm going to just start kind of from this area and work my way down that way. And before I do that, Dad, you want to hand me that rubber, uh, the rubber mat over there? This thing's kind of floating on me a little bit, so I want to, I want to put my mat down. Normally speaking, the weight of the sign will kind of hold itself down, but in this particular instance, it seems to want to kind of rotate on me, so I think I'm going to I really don't want to take any chances, so I think I'm going to put that down. Yeah, that's just enough to hold it in place. Perfect. Thank you. All right, here we go.
when I'm doing this, guys, it's not necessary that these lines line up with these lines because it's the overall effect of the sign. The main thing is that you get these close enough that you don't leave, well, let me show you. So I wouldn't want to leave a piece that when I sand it off is going to come up white. So I move it over just far enough to make sure that all of the, that there's nothing left at the surface of the board. So the only thing that ends up wood color will be the letter. Then it the border. This takes quite a bit longer because of all of the, the lifting and placing, but it leaves a pretty cool effect. Okay guys, I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing there. I'm going to go ahead and do, do the rest of over here and over here off camera. And then once I've only got this piece and this piece left, we'll bring the camera back on and I'll show you how I do the, those big long stretches like that. Okie dokie. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, we're back. So I went ahead and I cleaned out all of this... Uh, all of the background around the letters. Now I've just got this section and this section. So I'll go ahead and finish up this section here on camera and then I'll do that off camera. Then we'll come back and do some edging on this and uh, get ready to spray it and sand it off. So here we go.
So whenever I have high spots, I don't know if you can see this, Dad. A little high spot here and here. I, are you in on that? Yeah. Okay. You just, on those, they're thin enough, you just knock them down. If they're thicker, you definitely want those down so you don't, that doesn't come up a white spot when you're doing the sanding. When I build these lines, guys, you see, I'm not all that critical about keeping them straight. If it runs kind of with the grain a little bit, it really doesn't matter. But what I do want to make sure is that I don't have one line running into the next. I want to try and keep them separate as I go along. As I'm moving up here, you'll see I've got nothing underneath the base over here. So I definitely want to keep pressure on this side where I know that base is riding on a flat surface. I don't want the base to end up dropping down in that dip.
Okay, there you have it. That's pretty much the... Now what I'll do is I'll go back and make sure I don't have any high spots like that one. I'll chip that out. So that kind of gives you an idea of the way that effect is done. Now I'll move on, I'll move on to this lower section, but I'll do that off camera because I think you guys got to see quite a bit there. So uh, again, I'll just look at it at kind of an angle, make sure that I don't have any high spots. I'll chip those off with my, my pocket knife or my little carving tool. Okie doke. We'll uh, see you on the next scene and we'll go ahead and do some edging on this and get this thing finished up. Okay, we are back. So I have finished up all of the... All of the background on this, all the carving is pretty much done. Now I, all I have to do really is just put the edge on it, chamfer on the front and the back, and then, um, and then we'll spray it and sand it off, see how it comes out. So what I'm going to use here is the, the 45 degree chamfer bit or bevel bit, either one, pretty much the same thing, uh, with a half inch bearing on it. By the way, this is the one that I used in a, in a previous uh, video that I just did the other day um, about scalloping. So this is the same bit that we use for scalloping as well, but it is uh, so it's a 45 degree uh, chamfer bit with a half inch bearing. So I'm just going to flip this thing over and do the back first and then set it a little bit deeper and flip it back over and then do the surface. So here we go. Are you with me dad? I'm with you son. Flip this thing over here. You want me to flip that over and make sure you don't drop it and break it? No, I got it. Too late. Okay. I would have had you do it too. Yeah, I thought about it. I'm gonna go a little deeper. How deep you go? A little deeper. Okay. <laughs> Heavier chamfer on the front. Yeah. sure that I've got all of my high spots out of there on that background because I don't want to sand start sanding this thing and realize I have any any high spots I've kind of gone over it a couple times already but just so you know what I do especially on one like this I hold the sign up and then I look down across it and I can see all the high spots there's not too many not too many high spots I don't think there's anything there now that's going to come up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold the sign up and see if you guys can get a vision of that i don't know can you get kind of a i don't know where i'm at angle wise we're on the chamfer well no not necessarily on the chamfer but on looking down parallel oh, to the I edge see, I see. so you can get a shot at all the high spots yeah it's pretty good it's not yeah. anywhere near as good as as your view on it but it's pretty good from out here so anyway i've done that and now what i'm going to do is go ahead and blow this thing off We'll move on to the next scene and I'll, I'll get set up for spraying this whole thing red and uh, then it'll take a few minutes for it to dry 
being as it's about 100 degrees out here right now. So um, then we'll sand it off and we'll see what she looks like. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so we have the sign all done. I've got all the chips out of the background. Everything's pretty much ready to spray. So I'm going to start spraying and make sure my can is flowing good. I'm going to start spraying this. Now, you'll notice that I, I masked off the edge. If you remember back to the picture that I have to match up uh, this sign too, the outside edge is all painted white. So what I did was I didn't want really any, any red to overlap on the, on the very edge of the sign here. So I went ahead and masked it off. So it's going to leave me very little to sand around the edge, just where the masking tape isn't covering. So um, when you're spraying this ink, again, make sure that, you're, that you shake it up pretty well before you start spraying. I don't do this in any particular pattern or any particular way other than just keep make sure the can is moving the whole time. I notice you're not spraying right over the letters. That way you don't have to sand them off. As yeah. much is that uh, is that your thought on it? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, the only place I really want to spray and keep it to a minimum, there would be really no reason to spray in here because that's what's going to be red. This is going to come back wood anyway. So there's just no no reason to really spray the the surface of the letters other than what's over spray from catching the edge. That's that's the kind of the reasoning behind that. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to let it set for just a couple minutes. Well, actually, it's it's almost dry now, so I'll just go ahead and, and flip it over because I want to spray it from the top side down too, or actually, excuse me, upside down. Hopefully, this will work out on camera here. Trying not to drop it. Now would be a bad time to do that. All right, so now I'm just going to hit a few of these little spots where it's kind of just a little bit uh, not covered well in the red. So I'm just going to go over this and try and catch those spots that aren't red in there. This stuff sands really well, so it's not like I, I have to worry about over spraying on this, on this redwood. The only time I really have to be careful of of how heavy I spray this ink, within reason of course, is when I'm using pine. And that's when I, you know, I pre-treat my, I pre -treat my boards with, uh, with sanding sealer. I think that's about good. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and shut this scene off. We'll come back and sand that thing off and see what it looks like. Okay, so now we're gonna start our sanding and see how this thing comes out. Now what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use my standard, uh, my standard belt system. I use, a, I think this is a 50 grit. Uh, and that's gonna be my rough sand. Then I'm gonna change my, and pick up my other sander which is a 120 grit and then finish it off with that. Now on this particular one, um, Again, I don't have, I really don't have to sand any of this since it's all going to be painted white, the letters and the edge. But I want you guys to see kind of how it comes out and I kind of want to see how it comes out too. But I literally, I could leave this just the way it is because it's all going to be painted. But I want it to have a finished look kind of when the customer gets it. I want you guys to see how it comes out too. And I'm a little curious. So here we go. I'm going to put my glasses on here and we'll start sanding.
return that for you, Jeff. Oh, I have done that. Thank you, Jeff. So as you guys can see, i am uh, got a really light touch with that sander because if I let that thing tip at all, it will gouge a groove in that really fast. And some of you probably have experienced that. So you can see I didn't get all the red off with that, but I got most of it off. Now I'll go back and I'll finish it up with the, the uh, 120 grit. So then it should smooth it up pretty good. <laughs> Now, as you guys probably realized and noticed, I sanded with the grain the whole time. So even though if I was using the, the rough or the, or the fine grit, I'm sanding with the grain the whole time. That's pretty much it. Can you see it all right? Here, I'll hold it up. Now, I'm not going to bother sanding off the back because, again, I know it's going up against a post and he's going to paint the whole thing white. So, just not necessary. But not too bad. I think that's kind of what he wanted. So, all of this is going to be white. This is all going to be white. So, it's, it's done for me. All I got to do now is, uh, is pack it up and ship it. And uh, that will be our next video. I'll actually show you how I'm going to pack this thing up and, and ship it. So um, stay tuned. We'll see you on the next one.